Scarlett Satia, student. I may have mispronounced your last name. Hope not. I am Scarlett Seda, an 11th grade student at Pickens High School. I am currently taking a full load of college classes at Tri-County Technical School. After graduation, I plan to attend Anderson University and major in nursing as a prerequisite to medical school. I have benefited greatly from the college and career prep courses offered to me in the past three years. As a freshman and sophomore, I benefited most greatly from the opportunities at the Career Center offered, including clubs like HOSA and many more. For example, I enrolled in the biomedical program at the neighboring Career Center as a freshman in high school, and that has made my college level microbiology class all the more easy. I also took an array of advanced placement courses offered at my high school in the past two years. What was surprising was that many students appear to understand the material and did well in the class test. However, most performed poorly on the standardized AP test. Evidently, most did not truly grasp the content. The rigor of the coursework felt terribly short of the standardized test. Of course, standardized tests have many critics, but without them, you'll never be sure if, a, if students grasp the material in a particular course taught by a particular teacher the, a similarly related problem is the students in the regular classes, also known as college preparatory or CP classes, because the students really don't seem to try very hard. As a result, they act out, which is very disruptive and disrespectful for the kids who legitimately do want to learn the content. The, the teachers of the CP classes seem overwhelmed at students throwing ham against the ceiling and pointlessly sna snapping pencils, but they have to accept it. As a result, teachers don't put out as much effort as they would in a well-behaved classroom. At the private school I attended at a younger age, respectful behavior was more than expected and adequately enforced. In my CP physical science class during my freshman year, I witnessed the struggle of a first-year teacher as he ineffectively tried to control an obnoxious class. How do you fix that in this committee? Clearly the problem is at the school level and is not being addressed. Like I said earlier, I'm currently enrolled in dual credit classes at a technical school with people who are either pursuing an associate's or learning a trade. But I see some of the same problems there as I did back in high school. Many do not put forth their best effort. For example, the average grade was a 58 on the first exam in the microbiology class and only one student earned an A. That student was me and I'm four years younger than everyone in the class. It is not to say that I'm smart because I'm not. I just studied diligently as the instructor told the class to, but many students need more incentive and apply themselves more to their work. From my experience, I have learned that students fall into one of five categories. The ones who fail to graduate, the ones who graduate and enter the workforce with a high school diploma, the ones who attend technical schools and earn an associate's degree, the ones who complete an education at a four-year university, and the ones who enlist in the military. The ones who are college bound will do well regardless of the circumstances, and those going to technical school should be able to find their way. The focus of this bill is, needs to be aimed at those who are dropping out and graduating only backed by a diploma, because they will no longer be able to find the manufacturing jobs out there like they could have, let's say, 30 years ago. Today, McDonald's is replacing cashiers with kiosks and programmed robots controlled by computers are replacing factory workers. How do you create opportunity for those students and motivate them to, to reach those opportunities? That is the key question, I think. Thank you, Scarlett. Any questions of Scarlett? Thank you very much. Thank you. Very well done.